All right, we are going to our workout, sevens in charge. Ben is not gonna be joining us this morning, which is sad and weird for me, but his neck is still really bothering him. Birds are chirping. It's a beautiful day out here. That was different doing it without Ben. <laughs> a little less uh, organized, but we still got our uh, Michael Jackson on. Okay, this is not good. We only have enough for a half press of coffee. And we just invited someone over for coffee, okay. Over for coffee. Rachel just got here, our friend and Hebrew instructor, and we are out of coffee, so we're gonna have to figure this out. It's gonna be kind of ghetto. Luckily, we got these from a hotel. Do you want more, Dad? Dude, I do not know if this is going to work. I'm not drinking it. Thank you. Today is one of those like meeting days where it is 11 o'clock already. We just finished having coffee because our friend came over and we just felt like it was more beneficial to talk through some things and hang out. And then I have a lunch meeting at noon and another meeting at three. So I feel like I'm not gonna get any work done. <laughs> Ugh. But there's always this tension between believing that when I'm hanging out with a person, like there's nothing more valuable in this life really and sharing our stories versus just like getting projects done. But I know those are for people too. It's hard sometimes. Look at this, we got a package. Ooh. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And we are out of coffee we didn't roast. Whoa, perfect. Fight for coffee together. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I wanna thank you for your vlog. My family has grown and learned many things from it. Business meetings, all family dinners, and coffee. Roasting are the highlights. I've enclosed a half pound of coffee I roasted this weekend. You encouraged me to not accept chunky coffee. The details of the coffee are on the bag. Please enjoy, thanks again. Dan and Andrea, can we have a sticker? Ooh. Yes, uh, you can have a sticker. <laughs> that's a very good roast. That's that very is. consistent. I can never get mine that consistent. Thank you guys. Thank you. It is time for Q&A. On Instagram, Everthine Paris asks, 
What made you move from Washington to where you live now? How do you go about making community like you have in a new area? We moved here because my family was already here, even though I, we're from Seattle. We owned, part owned uh, a company that was kind of starting to boom and Ben felt like he should help with that. That was the initial reason. Community is really hard. People are really messy. But we have learned that geography and the way towns are built and set up is actually a huge factor. And we looked at a lot of places before moving here. We had lived in Seattle, Portland, Jerusalem. And this place is set up really different. I think because it was founded and built more than 100 years ago, a lot of the way modern places are built are not helpful towards relationships or community. Okay. Sam Ray 7 asks, when you have the kids help with Shabbat cleanup, do they ever not do their tasks? And if so, how do you deal with that? You're on. Yes, that's a problem every single Shabbat cleanup. Most often it's because they only do part of it or actually sometimes they completely don't do it. And if I catch it, because I don't always catch it, then I just have them either redo it or do it the first time. I don't have a consequence for that. I think the worst thing that you can do as a parent though is to do it yourself. And I definitely am guilty of that. Tons of time to spare. Is Melandy asks on Instagram, I have been having a hard time dealing with the transition of my daughter who's three and a half years old, not napping, and being extremely cranky. Any advice or teething tricks you've picked up along the way? All right, you're on. I would say that it's probably just a phase and she'll probably end up napping better eventually. Teething, give them cold things for their gums. My general approach to this is that there's a lot of pain that you actually just can't take away from kids. It's just part of growth. The yeah. big companies are always trying to sell you different things to numb, distract, hide, bury, and not deal with pain. And it sucks, but it's actually a normal, healthy part of life. You just have to wait it out, like Cami said. And actually, we believe the most natural thing you can do is just to hold your child in the pain that they're in. Even though they're cranky, even though you don't want to be around it, even though they don't want to be around it. Mariah asks, any material or resources you can re recommend for getting out of debt and becoming financially independent? Not a lot. Uh, I've heard that Dave Ramsey is good, although I've never used his stuff. I've also looked into, there's a blogger named Mr. Money Mustache who is really helpful in crunching some numbers and helping people realize the severity of being in debt. He says to treat debt like you ha your hair is on fire. Like get frantic and desperate about it now. So I hope that helps. Heather Q on Instagram asks, are you guys still attending that class at that church or was it just a temporary thing? Was it cool? What did you guys learn? It was a temporary class. Um, Six weeks? Yeah, we stopped a few months ago. It was the second time we'd taken it. I think it was good. Uh, we had done the class before, but we'd never done it with our kids. And some of the stuff was new. The main gist of the class was God started a story in the Jewish scriptures with the people of Israel. That story is not finished with them. He is still in the process of fulfilling that story and we get to be a part of it. Israel as a people in a place seems like far away to me. Like we identify as more of like the Christian religion and that seemed like a completely separate thing. And this class is a good reminder for us that you know we are not a separate thing from the Jewish people, place, or religion. Um, that that's actually our roots and they're really important to understanding who we are to this day. Starbright in a YouTube comment says, Cami, I'd love to hear more about how you overcome those thoughts and worries about how having more children could change your body. Society puts a lot of pressure on women to be sexy with a perfect body, especially through pornography. I worry my husband could lose attraction for me if my body got any worse as he is conditioned to society's ideal. How does Ben deal with this? 
That's definitely been a process for me. With the first four kids, it was really hard. Um, I was constantly having thoughts and worries about my body and I didn't feel good about it. One of the ways I've overcome is I had to replace what I believed with something else. I had to believe that sacrificing my body for the good of another human was like worth sexiness or a flat stomach or a smaller butt. How does Ben feel about this? I think I've been a way harsher critic on myself than he has. I'm fortunately like he hasn't been a super harsh critic for on me. He's been very just really good about it. Um, I think he believes that having children and your your changes in your body is like way more important than looking a certain way. And I needed to come to that belief and I'm more I have more of that belief now than I used to. I think Cammy's looks are some of the least of the sacrifices we have made in our marriage with kids and our sex life. I mean, I think she's freaking hot. Um, I'm not gonna lie about that. But actually, like the drop in libido and having sex and having breast milk squirt all over you, those aren't like the hottest things ever. At one time in our life, we would actually prioritize our sex life, or I did, over those things. I thought having awesome sex was more important. Mm -hmm. But the older I get, the more I realize, I, I think sex is important, but actually, you know, those feelings and hormones and fun times, they come and go. But the decisions we've made around children and family, speaking of, have actually provided so much more value over the long run for us. I think one of the things I thought about is, am I gonna care about this in 20, 30, 40 years? No, my body is eventually gonna get saggy anyways and old, so why am I like, so yeah, anyways, that's one of the things that's helped me. But one of the things we're always talking about is how exciting it is to get old together and to look old. Like, you know, I don't mind having gray hair. I love the idea of becoming a grandpa and getting old. It's very natural and normal. Yeah. Our society puts a ton of emphasis on being young and skinny. I think it's a lie. Um, in fact, there's this awesome video I love about this whole thing. I'm gonna post it down below for you guys to check out about where that comes from in the media, needing to look young and hot. We gotta go on our date night. Date night is off to a bit of a rough start. Uh, Cammy wanted to go to Olive Garden and then go smoke cigars. And Ben, I already had a cigar today. I feel like I'm having a rough time transitioning from smoking cigars being one of those things I do with the bros to now my wife wants to do it with me like every day. I like smoking cigars with her. And not every day. And then I wanted to like ride bikes to somewhere a little closer instead of going to Olive Garden which is a long ways away. Ugh, first world problems. But actually being on the same page we could call it a first world problem, but we don't want to make light of that because it's actually really hard and challenging. Marriage is very hard in that way because we're always seeing the world differently. It used to be that us, so I'll just say this, her having a bad attitude, which she apologized for some of the things, would set me off and then I'd be in a bad mood for the rest of the night. But we worked through this thing and we're going to have a good night still. <laughs> Let me see. And then, then he hit Tony just as bad. He hit Tony not two plays later just as bad. Was he mad at you guys? I don't know. It was for four gators. <laughs> How are you feeling about sushi now? I'm really hungry and I just, sushi sounds good to me. Caught every star in the midnight sky. Caught every star in the midnight sky. I get 
We're not even trying to eat it fast. That's just like our pace. Now we're heading a block this way for some dessert. I don't even like comedies, and I think this movie is going to be terrible. But I've been waiting to see it because it reminds me of our life. Turns out her boyfriend is this internet zillionaire. I'm so fucking psyched that you're out here for the holidays. This is a 15 year old child. Oh, oh sh You don't say Last thing is to watch a movie in bed.